So we are here for the uh, departmental update, and as you remember, we've gone adopted that at the uh, first one of this year is the review of last year. So our current uh, full-time staffing level was 35 sworn. You remember we gained a position with the vote last year, uh, part, yeah, uh, last uh, town meeting to add the additional um, school resource officer. In January, Officer Tim Galvin retired after 32 years of service to the department. We congratulate Tim on his retirement, and I'm happy to report he will remain with the department as a part-time officer. In April, Officer Justin LaDuke graduated from the 175th New Hampshire Police Academy. Officer LaDuke resides in Epping, New Hampshire. And Officer LaDuke began his career as a part-time officer with the department in 2016. Officers Jason Jackson, Vitaly Sorokins, and Matthew Robinson were assigned to some of corporals successfully filling those positions from June until September. In July, Officer Coy DeMarco was assigned as Detective SRO at the Hampton Academy, replacing Matthew Robinson, who has returned to the Patrol Division. In July, Officer Shannon Feely was assigned as Detective SRO for the Marston School and Senna School. Officer Justin Goudreau was assigned as Assistant Prosecutor in July. In August, Officer Robert Delato graduated from the 176 New Hampshire Police Academy. Officer Delato resides in Hampton, and Officer Delato began his career as a part-time officer with the department in 2017. In December, Officer Howie Felch graduated from the 177th New Hampshire Police Academy. Officer Felch resides in Seabrook, New Hampshire. Officer Felch began her career as a part-time officer with the department in 2017. Our current part-time staffing level is at 31 uh, as of December. The following part-time officers left their positions for the department in 2018. We wish them the best in their future endeavors. Uh, William Polino, Ian Ford, Robert Delato, Haley Erickson, Connor Sutherland, Connor Perry, Luke Wellington, Harley Felch, Sean Grant, Jordan Estevez, and Joe LaMagna. It should be noted of the 11 officers who left their part-time positions, seven were hired as full-time officers including two with the Hampton Police Department being Robert Delato and Harley Felch. <clears throat> Twelve new part-time special officers came to work for the department in 2018. Casey Spaulding, Andrew Bistany, Stephen Nickerson, Kevin Smith, Jordan Estevez, Zachary Terranzoni, Philip Rizzi, Daniela Tupi, David <laughs> Lilly, Adam Ivanick, Jeffrey Cabrera, and Adam Ryan. Each of the new officers succeeded in a rigorous hiring process and completed 200 hours of training to receive certification as part-time officers with the New Hampshire Police Stands and Training Council. An additional 100 hours of department training was required before the new officers could start their patrol duties. Civilian personnel, we have uh, nine full-time civilian personnel. In May, Holly Simmons assumed the duties as communication specialist. In August, Jordan Towers assumed the duties of a communication specialist. In November, communication specialist Rhonda Stevens retired after 20 years of service to the department. We congratulate Rhonda on retirement, and I'm happy to report she will remain with the department as a part-time communications specialist. In December, Christine partially assumed the duties of communications specialist. Training and recruitment. Recruitment and retention continue to be areas of focus of concern for the department and for law enforcement across the country. Each year takes extraordinary efforts by our training cadre to prepare our special part-time officers for the summer beach operation. Our supervisory personnel did an outstanding job leading and mentoring a team that provided for a safe and enjoyable summer season. In addition to our in-house training programs, the Hampton Police Department hosts some of the finest law enforcement training in the country in our training room. Many of these training sessions are attended by officers from around the United States and Canada. The prestigious list of training includes what is not limited to the New Hampshire Police Standards and Training Part-Time Officer Academy, two sessions, New Hampshire State Police Civil Disorder Training, New England Crisis Negotiator Association, Leaders Helping Leaders Network, uh, the GSPCC Social Media, and the FBI Law Enforcement Executive Development Association, five courses. The department, was, the department was recognized in May as a recipient of the 2018 Tom Stone FBI Leader Award of Excellence. The annual award was established to recognize a member of the association for outstanding achievement in promoting the science and art of law enforcement management. Department Operations. The department investigated 31 overdose cases in 2018, eight of which resulted in death. The Patrol Division and the Criminal Investigation Division continue to work diligently with our local, state, and federal partners to combat the opiate epidemic the region continues to experience. The department continues to have an officer assigned to the Regional Federal Task Force to help combat this issue. 
department has continued with regional efforts working with the Portsmouth Police Department, the Greenland Police Department, and Seabrook Police Department to form a Seacoast Region High Intensity Drug Intervention Team utilizing grant funds from the New Hampshire Department of Safety Law Enforcement Opiate Abuse Reduction Initiative. In August, the town was faced with a significant challenge when an outbreak of Legionnaires disease was identified in the beach area. The outbreak posed a direct threat to public safety and the economic viability of the community. The town's response was placed under the direction of emergency management team who partnered with both state and federal health agencies to deal with the crisis. The Hampton Police Department headquarters was utilized as the operations center for the unified response and the department was active in supporting this mission. With a continuing shortage of officers, the department continued with a program of bringing in experienced officers from other agencies to augment our staffing levels on weekends and during special events. This has proven to be very helpful in maintaining order and providing for good traffic flow through the beach area. Special thanks to the New Hampshire State Police, Rockingham County Sheriff's Department, University of New Hampshire Police Department, Epping Police Department, Exeter Police Department, Greenland Police Department, and the Seacoast Emergency Re Response Team, which all provided personnel and equipment to assist during our busy seasons. I'd also like to thank the Seabrook Police Department for their continued cooperation and coordination of traffic control along the Ocean Boulevard corridor. The department also would work closely with the New Hampshire Liquor Enforcement Bureau conducting compliance checks and coordinating efforts to reduce the level of over-service and enforcement of underage drinking laws. Additional thanks to the New Hampshire Department of Transportation, New Hampshire Homeland Security and Emergency Management, and the New Hampshire National Guard 12th Civil Support Team. Special note of thanks to each of these agencies for their continued support and cooperation, making Hampton a great place to live and visit. Uh, at the bottom, you'll see a summary of our activities compared to the same period last year. Um, I won't go over the, the numbers, I'll just give you the uh, percentage change. Our calls for service were up 2%, motor vehicle stops were down 1%, Arrests were down 24%, DWI, DWI is up 6%, drug offenses were down 46%, incidents reported down 12%, offenses down 12%, felonies down 9%, parking tickets up 45%, and accidents were down a little bit under a half of a percent. And I'll take any questions. Any questions from the board? Mary Louise. Um, well, well, let me start with this. You go back a ways, as I do, and I remember when we had 63 part-time specials, and we thought that was pretty terrible. We were aiming for 90 or something. 70. Was the, when I came here, it was 70 the good was the old target. days? Yeah. Um, with the school, uh, with the discussions uh, related to the school and the school resource officers, et cetera, my concern for your department is robbing you of say three full-time officers, what, what exactly are you going to have? Are you going to have part-time officers in, in the schools? I I have a hard time drawing. It, this is during the school season. Now, of course, in the summer the, you'll have your whole available staff. But what? How? It, how might it hurt your department by having two or three? full-time officers during the school season to protect uh, the, the youngsters. I, I'm, I'm having a hard time wrestling with that. I'm trying to wrestle with how anybody could conceive that it would be a detriment. It's, a, it's, a, it's an additional officer. But, so. you, right, but the, these are extras. You're having trouble getting officers is my point. No, we have trouble finding part-time officers. I think you'll find that the office, our recruitment effort, as far as the people we bring in full-time, yeah. has been outstanding. Uh, I'm in the process now of hiring, I believe, my eighth officer as chief of police full-time. Okay. And I would tell you right now, through the process, uh, because of our recruitment efforts and not lowering our standards just mm -hmm. to get numbers, if we had five openings right now, I could fill them. Okay. Confidently, because so. you don't feel that you're short staffing yourself by having the SRO two, three, four SRO officers in the schools. No, again, it's an additional That's option. Chance. So our full time okay. complement, if this if this Warren article were to pass in March, yeah. which I hope the voters would again not listen to some of the crazy talk I heard the other night at the budget committee. That was just unbelievable that people would make the comments they made. One person commented that you know we've got to stop this. It's the same person as a member of the Board of Selectmen endorsed the Warren article 
to add four officers when he sat on the Board of Selectmen. <laughs> but all of a sudden, one is too many. Just ridiculous commentary. Um, this is an additional officer okay. that would bring the staffing up to 36. Okay. And I remember back to your time, yeah. uh, previously on the board, there was a study done that says the Hampton Police Department should be at 44. Yeah. Oh. 1988 that yes. study was done. Yes. So that's where my concern is not not using resources office, resource officers, but if you are being shortchanged in your day-to-day -day administration of the officers, the number of officers you have to field out in the community. No, I feel that this would enhance our ability there. Okay. That the area where we're concerned about with the shortage is with our part-time ranks. As you said, uh, it wasn't 70. We, we, we are awarded 70 spots. Right now we sit at 31. Now that number is going to probably increase uh, as we get closer to the summer. We have an academy class starting right. on February 2nd. Mm -hmm. I'm meeting with the director of police standards and training tomorrow mm -hmm. to coordinate the schedule for that because we mm -hmm. are the satellite site for the academy. Okay. So we'll be running classes Tuesday and Thursday evenings down at the police department, mm -hmm. being simulcast from the academy to, uh, I, believe, I believe it's... Um, I know one of them is Keene, and I forget what the other, I think it's Littleton. And so mm -hmm. they'll be broadcasting them to those three sites. Those officers, along with three that we got from the Summer Academy, will be coming back to work. So hopefully there's up to ten, and maybe if we can pick up a few certified officers elsewhere, we can get up as many as a dozen. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on how many people leave, that'll kind of mm -hmm. the attrition rate. So looking at it as now, it's probably the best we've been in. That recruiting class we just had It's the best mm -hmm. class we've had in five years. Because while I was watching the discussion of the budget committee, my concern was, are we shortchanging the man on the street, your uniformed officers out there chasing down whatever, by, by um, segregating the SROs to just school duty, basically? No, actually, I, th I think it actually enhances, because if you look at the okay. fact that if we have an SRO on the grounds of a school, mm -hmm. they handle all the call calls at that school, whatever they may be. Mm -hmm. That frees up the officers that are out in patrol doing okay, the routine so patrol. So we're not going to reduce the patrol ranks. Okay. We're just adding an SRO. Okay. Well, I just hope to clarify that because yeah. it was rather a wild discussion. Well, I, I think some people are actually trying to make it a mystery when it's really not oh, well, I don't, I don't that want, mysterious. I don't want a mystery, but I just want to be yeah. reassured that our uh, duly constituted law enforcement <laughs> officers are fully staffed in the community to respond exclusive of the SROs who are handling their own. Life. There shouldn't be any change to those numbers, and it actually yeah. will reduce their responses okay. to schools because we'll have people okay. there. Okay. And one, yeah. one other quick thing. Uh, I'm, it's good that, that Rhonda is staying with you yeah. for these. But I want to compliment you and the department. I had occasion about a month ago to make an emergency call, which I don't do very often. And the dispatcher was incredible. I had a problem uh, that related to the uh, wa uh, air in the water lines, <clears throat> which made me very cross. And uh, I asked for help. Uh, the nice lady took my phone number. Uh, about 10 minutes later, I received a call from a technician at Aquarian who was going to come back and rescue me. And then after about 15 minutes, the dispatcher called back to be sure that I was okay, that I was getting help, et cetera. A plus, excellent service with police dispatch. And I was very proud of, of her and of your uh, department. That Thank evening. you. And again, if you think you remember what I said, one of the things I tried to institute with our new folks coming in, I don't want to hear somebody say, there's nothing we can do for you. It's not our problem. Mm -hmm. We may not be the answer but we can certainly get you to the person that has the answer, and that's a great example of that, so I'm glad that's worked, worked out. Very professional, very nice, and made, even though I was really cross, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it cooled me down a little bit. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. Regina. Yes, thank you, Chief, Deputy Chief. You guys do an awesome job, um, and you've always been there for the town long before my selectman career. You were always there and I know you'll continue to be always there. As far as since this SROs got brought up, I want to say one thing. We have one at Wanaconnet, and then we have two others right now, correct? Correct. Well, we have uh, Jim DeLuca is at Wanaconnet. Yeah. 
Clay DeMarco is at the academy, <laughs> and Shannon Field is doing double duty between the center and Marston. And all these went to town meeting for a vote, and they all passed, correct? Yes. All right, thank you very much. Very Jim? Good. Yeah, you guys do a great job. Um, you do a great job in the summer. You keep the beach calm. That's amazing. I mean, the number of people and sometimes the quality of the number of drinks that go down, you guys do a great job. Uh, I agree 100% with the SRO. Uh, you know, not only are they there at the schools, but they're preventing crime from happening in the future by, by developing a relationship with students, developing a relationship with the town. So I, I think it's a, it's a great program and it should be continued. Uh, when you talk about interesting statistics on the back page here, DWI is up 6%. <laughs> That's never good. No, the, the, the alcohol issues in the town uh, have been one of my biggest concerns, um, prior, even prior to being chief. And, and I understand the business model. My family was in business years ago, and I understand, you know, we're, we are made, we've made Hampton Beach a true destination. I mean, I hear from people, you know, that I went to the National Academy. Hey, I saw an ad for Hampton Beach, and it really looks like a great place, and I've had them come visit. And I guess we take it for granted. We, you know, we look at it every day, and they come up and they just think it's an amazing place. And you take a step back, it is, but that's because the people that think it's an amazing place are on vacation, and they're kind of letting their problems go. I know when I go on vacation, wherever it is, you know, I come back and rave about Nashville. It's an amazing place. I don't know if the Nashville police officers working the street would agree, because they got to deal with, with those problems like we do. So it's one of those constant battles. You know, we don't want to become an impediment to people's good time, but we also have to draw a line somewhere. And you know, a lot of it has to do with the overservice of alcohol down there. And people, I don't know what it is. We uh, really seem to have a good handle on the impaired driving for a while. People are using things like <coughs> Uber and, and Lyft and, huh? and being much smarter about it. And I don't know what happened, but over the last year to 18 months, it just seems to have gone back the other way, and I, I don't know what to attribute that to yet. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Drug offense is down 46%. That's super, That's isn't it? Or is that, is, that, think, is that a real statistic? Um, uh, listen, uh, we give statistics because it's a jumping off point. Statistics can say a lot of things, yeah. and it takes a lot of interpretation. One of the things is you'll notice that we had one more death this year, opiate, than we did the year before, yeah. yet the number of times um, we investigated overdoses was reduced, and the number of times Narcan was deployed in this town was almost cut in half. So what does that tell you? Does it mean fewer people are using it? Is the education working? Is the rehabilitation working? It's hard to put a handle on that. Now, there's other factors because I know people, as business people, uh, I met with a group of real estate folks the other day, uh, the morning, to talk about <clears> what could we do. And some of them are already carrying Narcan because they go into some of the same places we go into and could get contaminated if somebody left something there. Um, and, and that's a serious health concern for people. Um, so dealing with those type of issues. So is it because more people are carrying Narcan and using it on friends or family and not calling us? I don't know. I don't think the time period, the measurement period, uh, is really long enough in duration to make a, a true determination of that. My hope is is that we're getting smarter in our uh, approach to the problem, that it's not always going to be the enforcement. It's the follow-up. It's the education and the follow-up with people that are trying to rehabilitate from that and giving them, getting them to the treatment that they need and the follow-through on it is really the key. Super. Parking tickets up 45%. That shows that, that those guys are out there doing their job. Yeah, we were able to really enhance that program this year. Uh, one of our uh, retired officers came back and in parking enforcement capacity. Um, Mr. Hamlin was back again, and then we had a new member join the team. And they really took the challenge that we, we wanted to reduce. And it's one of those ways we can reduce um, the officers getting involved in that and have them focus on more important issues by having this parking enforcement team. So. I know there's some concerns going on um, with the Budget Committee about the combination of the parking lots with the enforcement as one unit, um, and I would hate to see that be jeopardized because they showed great productivity. And it's you know not that we're the police department's in the business of revenue, but in that area, it's an area where I think it's legitimate because we're trying to ticket the areas particularly where the residents have parking spots and people are taking those. So. I hope uh, we can get through the budgetary process with that intact. Super. <clears throat> yes, right. um, I would agree uh, with everyone that you seem to be doing a great job. Um, I think since I've been here, 
Um, and I'm coming up uh, on my 15th year this next uh, year. This is the most, in the, with the, you have 10 categories here on activity, and seven of them are down. Mm -hmm. So that's an amazing statistic in itself. So I think that's the best that I've seen, so. Sometimes low business is good business. So in this in those categories that we're knocking it down, I really want to try to work on the alcohol, the alcohol issues this year, or the DWI, and really yeah. try well, to get that message across. Work. Thank you. You know, I, I've talked to a number of people about the SRO officers, and Jim DeLuca up, up to the high school. The one nice thing about it is there, the kids trust him, they talk with him, and I'm sure because of that, he builds a rapport with them, and that saves us a lot at that. Yeah. And then seeing uh, Officer DeMarco and, and uh, Feely? Yep, Shannon Feely. Shannon out here. They're out every morning, whether it's raining, snowing, sunny out, directing the traffic at the schools, making sure the kids get across the crosswalks. Yeah. I think that's an excellent opportunity for the for them to work with these kids, and, and I think our they're also doing a great job in the, in the school. So I think you're right, that does head off some mm -hmm. other problems that you would have further on down the road. And it gives them, the kids a rapport to know an officer, to talk to an officer. So if they have an issue, they can bring that up to them. And I think that's yeah. invaluable. And to be fair, I, I, I appreciate the concerns that people express sometimes about these programs. As you recall, I was one of the first, one of the first two SROs in this community. And I remember those days. There was a lot of controversy, a lot of concern about having an armed police officer in the schools. Mm. Now it's kind of passe. People expect it. Um, but I do respect opinions that don't like it. I, I, I truly do. I understand that there's different opinions on it. What I, I think nobody appreciated was the negative manner in which those were expressed. Some of the, some of the egregious comments, um, you know, that the comment was made that the police were at fault for the parking the shooting. No, no, the shooter was at fault. The person with homicide and harm in their heart caused that tragedy. Now, were there problems with the response of Parkland? Absolutely, absolutely. What that has to do with a proposal for an SRO and how we approach school safety in the town of Hampton is beyond me or why anybody would reach that low to try to sink something they don't agree with. Uh, it just was egregious. Uh, you know, another comment made was that, you know, in their time on the board, they were they were always just S, you know they were just officers, and all of a sudden, miraculously, they're detectives. That was done eight years ago. Eight years ago. But this is what we're bringing up to tear down what we don't agree with. Mm -hmm. I respect not agreeing with it. Cast your vote. Speak your mind on that. But to go to those low levels is really getting beyond common decency. And I only bring this up in light of the fact that we're going to have an important meeting tomorrow night. And I would hope people, whatever their opinions are of any anything that's going on with the budget with the schools, it's okay to disagree. But don't tear people down individually. Don't tear down institutions or people that are coming to do what they believe is their best work. You can just disagree. And, and I would respect if the taxpayers voted this down, I would say, they couldn't afford it. They didn't believe they could afford it. And we'll do the best we can without it. But we don't have to get personal, and we don't have to get negative like that. And I hope tomorrow night people have, learned, have heard what some of the people said tonight and hear that. You can be diplomatic in your disagreements. There's no reason to get like that. And I hope we can avoid that tomorrow. I couldn't agree with you more. I hope that we have uh, plenty of people, and I encourage everybody to come out, because it's not only the school budget tomorrow night, it's, it's the yeah. town budget, yeah. too. So it is your one time to speak at the public hearing, and I hope people do that. Yeah, one more really quick request. Sure. You know, you and I discussed this uh, regarding Legionnaires when you were running back and forth with all the state people mm -hmm. and whatever. Uh, could you please repeat a request to them that if they're sending down messages, because the crew in Channel 22 will tell you, they can <laughs> adjust whatever the state sends down. So please will the state send down something on white background, black print, and big enough so people know there's a scary disease out there. Understand that was that was the first time in my 30-year career that I've dealt with the, the Department of Health and Human Services. Yeah. And you did an uh, excellent job. Thank you, I appreciate you. that. And I, nothing against them, they were great people, but I hope it's the last time because that was a scary thing. Yeah. Uh, when you say the state, you gotta remember the state's made up of many different entities. 
and you get you get different responses from depending on the circumstances. And I'll be honest, most of the relationships we've had with the state have been mm -hmm. pretty good. I, I really don't, as police chief, I don't have a lot of complaints with the Department of Transportation, Department of Safety, mm -hmm. the parks, and, and meeting these people in the Health and Human Services, they were amazing. Yeah. But that message to get across to them, and if we have any future yeah. occurrences, if you see that, pick up the phone and let me know, because obviously in my role as chief and emergency yeah. management director, yeah. I'm usually the point person on those things yeah. that I can get things changed Because they sent three pages of mush. I know. And that know. doesn't help the public. Nope. Any other and you're trying to help the public. I just want to make one statement Virginia. since we're talking yep. about this right now. Also on the warrant, which Selectman Griffin also brought up, is the election of officers. So if you have any major concerns with your elected officials throughout the whole town, <laughs> that's another good reason to go to deliberative mm -hmm. session and town meeting and cast your vote. And also put your uh, name out there and offer to um, be a candidate. Exactly. There's always room for someone else. Well, I offered my sentiments to the, uh, the panel I met with on Friday about what could we do as citizens? Get involved with the local government. Yeah. That's Absolutely. the most important yeah. thing you can yeah. do. It's the most, you know, it just amazes me every time we have a national election, 10,000 people show up to vote, and at the next town meeting we only have 3,000. Oh, yeah. When you look at your daily life, who impacts it? It's your local elections that impact your daily life more than anything else. Totally agree. Run for office or get involved, vote, be there. Be a, t a participant in your future. Don't let other people make the decision in your name because you probably won't be happy in the end. Yeah. So that's the end of my political speech. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> anything else for the chief of deputy? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good night. You tell those nice dispatchers thank you. I will.